Hello, good people of YouTube, Mount Batten here, and today we are taking a look back at the oldest tier 9 battleship in the game, which is of course the Iowa, the American Tech Tree tier 9 mainline battleship, gotta say that now with the line split. So you might be about to type, actually Sea Lord, the Iowa and the Ismo are tied for the oldest tier 9s in the game, since the Japanese battleship line and American battleship line were the first two battleship lines in the game. You're not wrong about the Japanese and American battleship lines being the first two battleship lines in the game. The Ismo, however, didn't exist until update .3.1. For quite some time, you went from the Amagi to the Yamato without any Izumo in between. But the Iowa's always been there. So she is legitimately the oldest Tier 9 battleship in the game. And looking at this ship, and looking at how she's changed over the years, over the six years that this game has been out, it's quite interesting, especially considering she does really quite well in today's World of Warships, considering she is such an old ship. So that's, of course, what we're going to be talking about today, continuing our past uh, about week and a half of looking back at older ships uh, series, which you guys do seem to be enjoying quite a bit. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and look at the, the Iowa in today's World of Warships. Now, do keep in mind, I am keeping my build on the ship for the duration of this video, so we are talking about the ship with my Commander Module build. Nothing really special there, just a normal American Battleship build. Uh, the build should have came up on screen either way, and we will be talking about her stats with those skills and modules equipped, so just keep that in mind. So, the Iowa. The Iowa is, of course, a real steel ship. And when I say a real steel ship, I mean that in real life, this ship was constructed, well, designed, constructed, launched, put into service, and used by whatever navy it is representing in game. And what's really cool about the Iowa is that you can go to all four of the sisters today and see all of them. And I've seen the Wisconsin in person. I even have a video of it up on the channel if you want to check that out. Uh, do be aware it is before I got like an actual decent camera to go do these uh, real still ship videos with so the camera might be a little bit bouncy. Uh, and it is a bit of an older video too so I apologize for my um, not so smooth camera controls. But anyway if you want to see it link will be somewhere but it is really interesting to see this ship in real life considering that in game i was a big ship but she's a tier 9 battleship which means she gets you know you play with tier 10 battleships and even a lot of tier 9 battleships are much larger than her but then you go see the ship in real life and you're like oh my god this thing is absolutely just ginormous it really makes you appreciate the size of these these vessels and again if you can see one i do recommend that you guys go check out an Iowa if, if you got one near you. But anyway, that adds a lot to the cool factor. It's really cool to see a ship in game, played in game, then get to see it in real life. That's one of the, my favorite things about this game. But anyway, the ship herself, she's gone through quite the series of changes over the past six years. And we'll be talking about her more recent ones in this video. By recent, I mean like freaking two years ago. But anyway, the Iowa, her stats, starting off with her armor, she is... Completely coated in 32 millimeters of armor, bows 32, side plating's 32, stern is 32, her upper belt is 38 millimeters, uh, bow deck is 32, stern deck is 32, uh, mid deck is 38 as well. Now, underneath her side plating, underneath her torpedo bulges, she does have a 307 millimeter upper belt, a 297 millimeter citadel armor belt. And then underneath that, you have another 163 millimeter belt, but that is below the waterline. Now, that is one big change that the ship got quite some time ago, is that her citadel was up and exposed, very similar to North Carolina. If you've shot at the North Carolina, which is the Tier 8 tech line ship, you guys know how easy it is to citadel. The North Carolina's got a very high citadel. But the Iowa got her citadel lowered beneath the waterline, so that is very, very, very nice for the ship's survivability. So, of course, with a very light armor scheme like that, that makes the ship quite fast. And she, for a very long time, was actually the fastest battleship in game. But not so much anymore. But still, quite fast. You got a speed flag on, you can, you can get her up to 34.7 knots. So, continuing on with survivability, she has 79,000 hit points, which is not terrible, definitely. It's kind of middle of the road for Tier 9 now. 
especially with all the freaking tier 9 battleships that we have, but it's about right for tier 9, and she has 25% torpedo damage reduction. Now, the main feature of the Iowa are, of course, her guns. Her guns are 9 406mm 16 inch American battleship guns, and they are the 50 caliber guns, not the 45 caliber of the North Carolina. Caliber, when you talk about naval artillery, refers to the length of the barrel, which means that her shells fly much faster than the North Carolina shells. The North Carolina shells go about 702 meters a second once you fire them from the barrel with the AP. The Iowa's AP comes out at 762 meters a second, which doesn't sound like a huge boost. You know, it's 60 more meters on a shell that's already traveling 700 meters a second, but it's definitely noticeable, especially at range. Now, this is still considered slow by tier 9 shell, a shell of velocity, but it's the American Mark 8 AP shell, that super heavy AP shell, which means that this shell packs a hell of a punch. So this is a 16 inch shell that in real life had at longer ranges similar pinning capabilities as the Yamato's 18 inch shell. So that's quite the shell and that's reflected here in game two with just the sheer punching power of the 16 inch American AP. Now am I saying you, you're going to be clapping ships like the Yamato can, can clap ships in game? No. But it still packs one hell of a punch for being a 16 inch gun. Now, of course, the drawback is that it is still a slower shell at Tier 9, so at longer ranges, you will have to lead your target by quite a bit. And if you watch the gameplay in the background right now, that's exactly what I have to do in the battle that you're watching right now, especially because the game evolves to a very long-range uh, stage for me, uh, being one of the few ships that went to this flank, but you'll see what I'm talking about. But again, if you can manage to get it to land, it absolutely hits hard. Now, not all the game is going to be fought at long range either. You'll be fighting a lot at mid range, which is really the sweet spot of the Iowa. From about 15, 14, 16 ish kilometers, you don't really notice the slow shells too much. You may you still have to, you know, give it a bigger lead, but not, of course, the same lead you have to give it at freaking 20 kilometers. So the shell is really in its sweet zone in around that 17 to 15 kilometer zone, or hell, even closer than that too. Though. You won't even notice the, the lead at all. You should be punching the crap out of ships. Now, the Iowas have a bit of a reputation for, well, and the, the Monty and the North Carolina too, being a cruiser killer. With that slow AP shell, you don't get as many overpins as you normally do on cruisers. So in some ships where you would overpin with, you know, a shell or two hitting not in the medius part of the ship, the Iowa, you'll notice that a little bit less. Not to like the British battleship uh, level with their short fuse AP, but just because the shell's so freaking slow. Now, the HE is no slouch on this ship either. You get a 36% chance of starting a fire every 30 seconds with nine guns with some pretty darn accurate guns. That's pretty darn good. And the HE comes out the barrels at 820 meters a second, so a bit faster than the super heavy uh, AP. She does get 20 of the standard American 5-inch secondaries. Uh, I, I wouldn't really recommend a secondary build on the ship. The secondaries simply don't have the range. I mean, sure, you can build them out a little bit more now with the commander rework and how they did buff the base range of a lot of secondaries, but I, I wouldn't build into it. It's not the Georgia. All right, uh, AA, this is where the Iowa uh, really shined back in the day. Back in the day, the AA on the ship was absolutely untouchable. CVs would completely ignore you simply because they would lose all their planes if they went after you, especially if you were an AA build. And today, she still has a pretty darn good AA if it can manage to last the match because of, of course, the amount of HE spam that's in the game now. And, of course, British battleships were introduced. But still really good AA, and you can still build into it to make it quite fearsome, but... I, I, I wouldn't. I would just go with the build that I got on the ship right now. We are talking about the maximum speed of the ship. A uh, turning circle, not the ship's strong suit. She has a turning circle that's just shy of a kilometer at 920 meters. This is a tremendously long ship. You know, to make a ship go fast in water, you gotta make it long and thin. Very much what the Iowas are. So you got that giant turning circle radius with a rudder shift time of 17.1 seconds. So definitely not the most maneuverable ship here. But it, she fast, though. She fast. So with the build I have on her, too, her sim is down to 12.7, which is very, very, very good. Not quite 
pre-nerf British BB, so you could get theirs down to 11 something. But 12.7 kilometers on a ship that goes 34 knots is very nice. You can get out of very tight situations very quickly thanks to that right there. For her modules and consumables, um, her consumables, she gets the American Damage Con, which is fantastic. The American Damage Con, for those that don't know, is active for 22 seconds. Now, of course, when Damage Con is active, no fires and no flooding will happen. So having a 22 second long Damage Con is fantastic. It can really buy you time to get away from whatever's setting you on fire, whatever's torpedoing you. It's very, very good in today's World of Warships. And she has the improved American Battleship Hill. This is one of the biggest buffs this ship received. So the hill, and if you want to see what the old hill looks like, go either watch one of my older videos on Missouri, or hell, any video talking about the whole kerfuffle that happened with the CCs back, at, uh, back a couple of months ago. There's plenty of Missouri footage there. I always used to have that hill. But a while ago, they gave her the improved heal, which heals 625 HP per second, and it's active for 30.8 seconds and reloads in 76 seconds. And with Superintendent, you get five charges of this, and you really, really see this heal do work in this match you're watching right now. Match you're watching right now, the flank that I'm on collapses, and it's wound, up, and it's just me on that flank for quite some time. By myself, so I'm the main target, so I eat plenty of damage, a lot of HE damage, there was a couple of cruisers that were trying to burn me down, and you really see this hill put in the work there and keep me alive for much longer than I would have if I didn't have the new heal and I still had the old heal. And you can equip fighter or spotter if you so wish so. Now for the modules, the Iowa does, ha does have access to the two special American battleship modules, the first of which is the Artillery Plotting Room Mod 1, which extends your firing range by 16% for your main battery and 5% by your secondary battery and gives your secondaries a 5% buff to their dispersion. And then she can equip the Artillery Plotting Room Mod 2 module, which gives you an 11% boost to your dispersion which is very, very nice because the normal Amy Systems mod uh, one only gives you um, a 7% boost to your dispersion, but this one gives you an 11% boost, which is very, very, very nice. So that makes the guns on the Iowa very, very consistent. Now, of course, you still get the odd wonky salvo here and there like you do with every battleship, but when that's not happening, you get some really good dispersion on the Iowa, and you'll see it here too. Keep in mind, these guns have a 30-second base reload time, so if you were an adrenaline rush on the ship, with the ship's armor scheme, you're going to take a couple of hit of, uh, of points of damage here and there throughout the match. So naturally, your reload is going to get down pretty darn quick. So it's not uncommon that you'll have like a 26, 25 second reload on this ship by the late stages of the game. And on 9 16 inch guns with the American AP shells, with the dispersion you can get with the modules equipped, it is quite good. And you can get the range out too with just the modules, not with the spotter plane, out to 27.1 kilometers. So I don't really consider taking spotter on this ship because honestly at that range, even past like 25, even with the 50 caliber guns of the Iowa, the shell flight time is so long that it's really difficult to make shots land at that range. Now if you do make shots land at that range, you'll notice that they're quite effective because of the firing arcs of the American battleships. The firing arcs, well the shell arcs I should say, you have this very very nice plunging fire effect at max range and you'll see that come into effect somewhere in this battle that you're watching right now which means you can go through the decks of plenty of ships at that range and citadel them. It's tricky to do especially at extreme range again with the very long flight time of the shells but if you can pull it off it works really 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 well but again it's pretty darn tricky to do. So the I went today's World of Warships how does she do? She's still a very very strong tier 9 battleship. Her guns are very 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 nice like I just explained. Couple that with the improved heal the still very, very fast top speed and the decent AA. And the ship is coated in 32 millimeters of armor and her side belt is 38, but that's still enough with her belt and with her with her citadel being below the waterline. If you know your ship's armor profile and know when you can and can't be cheeky to get your third turret on target, you can bounce plenty of shells in this ship. 
and angled Iowa is one of the more annoying ships to deal with. Uh, the thing is, Iowa being in the American Battleship line, a lot of newer players go up that line first because it's a North American server. America is a very large chunk of the player base here. Players, of course, want to grind out their nation's battleships first. I did way back in the day. So you see a lot of newer players in Iowa giving broadside, not really knowing what they're doing, trying to brawl in Iowa, which the Iowa can brawl when needed, but it's not a FTG. It's not a Palmer, you know, but it can do it when it's called to do so. But again, it, you, you can't do it multiple times. You can do it once or twice if you don't get blapped, baby, you know, but it, it, it's not a brawler, you know. It, it, it is a ship that attracts newer players, kind of like the Terpus that, that we talked about earlier this week. But a properly played Iowa is a really tough cookie, especially, again, a player that knows their angles, knows the firing angle, angles, uh, angles of the turret and such. And she, again, she's still a very good ship today. So if you have Iowa in your port and you've been your doctor for some time, try taking her out again. She's a very good ship if you know what you're doing and what you should do with the Iowa is use your speed run around a lot at, a lot at the back of the map player kind of like a battle cruiser I mean this is a fast battleship or kite away from the enemy team when the flank falls like you see me doing and just keep dumping them with your AP load your HC when needed when you need to get um, an annoying bow tanking battleship out of your face because a 38% chance of starting a fire on guns this consistent is is very 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 good and she can burn down her target quite well. Uh, back in the day, I was used to bow tank each other. You know, they'd sit perfectly bow in and kind of go back and forth from, you know, 15 kilometers away. Keep trying to throw AP at their target because with the fire, with the shell angles, uh, you can easily sneak this AP behind the turrets and plunge straight down to the superstructure and get some pretty good chunky damage. And you can still do that too today on a lot of um, ships with larger superstructures like uh, German battleships or. Um, like the Kremlin, if you if you can't hit the Kremlin superstructure because it, it's big but it's skinny at the same time. Um, our players would try to do that. Then you know when we switch to HE and start burning the other one down, the other one would be like, "Oh, you have to switch to HE to, to defeat me, all oh, you noob," you know. But but that, but that was uh, what warships are freaking four years ago. <laughs> so again, quite a different game today. But yeah, player in the back, run around a lot like a battle cruiser, kite away, use your speed to your advantage, kind of try to bait the enemy team to following you, then just. Slam the W key and, you know, speed away from them laughing at 34.7 knots. Unless it's an Alsace or a Georgia, then they'll be chasing you down because French speed boost and, you know, the freaking Georgia's um, hyper drive, you know. But she's still a very strong ship and one that, again, I would recommend you guys take out if you haven't played her in some time. Anyway, guys, let me know what you guys think about the Iowa. I'm sure most of you probably have her. So let me know what you guys think about her today, how you've been doing in her and such. And I would say this is probably even a better ship. If they, if they like offer the Missouri up for sale, the Iowa with that with that super heal, well not super heal, but, but with that improved heal is a better ship than the Missouri. And you can slap all the super economy flags on her and get some rare camos and probably even do better than the, than the Missouri that they're offering you guys to buy if you don't have the old Missouri. If you don't know this, any Missouri that you see from here on out won't have that super economy anymore. It just has a normal, it just has a normal tier 9 premium ship economy. And with the perma camo on the Iowa, with a rare camo on the Iowa, with the... Uh, special economic flags you'll easily outperform the new missouri in terms of its economy so if you guys are wondering no real reason to buy any new missouri anymore today but anyway guys hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel one away to 30,000 subs are getting very close to that goal and i cannot thank you guys enough for that hope you guys have a wonderful wednesday hope to catch you guys in the next one